In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of God our Father, His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries on this night, the Lord's Last Supper, let us first pause and call to mind our sins and ask God for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. that we may draw from so great a mystery 
the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel. On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male, without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the land. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this night I will go over Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood will mark but the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate, with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you I will offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon, the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not now understand, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who, for he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and the teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that I have done for you, you should do also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this night of the Lord's Supper, our first reading came from the book of Exodus. And tonight is one of those nights that not just because I'm a priest and we're celebrating the Lord's Supper on this Holy Thursday evening, but I'm excited because tonight we see Scripture unfold before us. I often repeatedly say, the Old Testament is always pointing to the new, and the new fulfills the old. And together, sacred scripture, the Old and the New Testament, give us this glory of God's revelation. In the Old Testament, we begin with creation. But then, shortly thereafter, is the fall. And though the fall takes place, Though sin enters into the world, when Jesus comes into the world, we just celebrated the Annunciation a couple of weeks ago. When Jesus entered the world, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God became man in the womb of our Blessed Mother. Jesus entered humanity. The Son of God came into humanity, into our history, into our life. And we see tonight, as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, in the readings we just heard, we see this coming to fruition. Our first reading from Exodus is the story of the Passover, the tenth and final plague in the Exodus. The tenth and final plague, which led to the Egyptian emperor saying, get out. Telling Moses and the Israelites, get out of my country, get out of my land. Now we know he changes his mind. But it was at this Exodus Passover that there were specific instructions given for this Passover meal. They were to take a one-year-old, unblemished male lamb, sheep or goat. 
They were to do this in each household, but if a household was too small, a couple could do it together. But they were to sacrifice this lamb and take the blood of this sacrificed lamb and using a branch, they took that blood and smeared it on the doorposts and the lintel of the door of their home. It was to mark their home for when the angel of death would pass over that night that their firstborn would be spared in each of the Israelite families. The sacrificed lamb was then to be roasted and it was to be eaten. Nothing could be left over. Whatever was left over had to be burnt, destroyed. And this, the Israelites were instructed, was to be a memorial feast. They were to celebrate it every year. And so, on Palm Sunday, when the Passion was read, we heard how Jesus and his disciples were preparing for the Passover. Some of the disciples went ahead to prepare for this memorial feast. And when Jesus celebrated the Last Supper, this Passover meal with his disciples, there was something very significant missing. The Lamb. Because Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus will be the ultimate Lamb of sacrifice on Good Friday. But it was also at that Last Supper that Jesus said, taking the bread and blessing it, he said, this is my body given up for you. And taking the chalice, the words we will hear tonight in the Eucharistic prayers of consecration, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. Listen to the words again of our opening prayer this evening. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. That is what the Eucharist is, the Last Supper, this gift of the Mass that we were given at the Lord's Supper. We celebrate this night and every time we celebrate the Mass. But Jesus took that chalice. He said, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Those words that we'll hear shortly. When Jesus takes that bread and that wine at the Last Supper and pronounces, this is my body and this is my blood, he's given us the Holy Eucharist, but that's not the end. What he has done is to point. He's pointing to the cross. He's pointing to where he ultimately gives his body and sheds his blood to conquer sin and death for us. You see, what we celebrate tonight completes the Passover in our first reading of Exodus. But what Jesus does tomorrow completes what he's given us tonight in this Holy Eucharist. So as we celebrate this beginning of the sacred triduum, this beginning of these holy three days, may we enter into these incredible mysteries of our Catholic faith. Amen. In remembrance, we gather. In humility, we look to God. In confidence, we pray for the church 
and the world. Let all who are called to ministry be faithful witnesses to the example of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who serve in the judicial system carefully tamper justice with mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who will be received into the body of Christ find warm welcome and wise guidance in this community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who struggle with mental, physical, and emotional illness find strength and courage for the trials of daily life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather around the table of the Lord find renewed inspiration in serving one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, you gave us your Son for our Paschal Lamb. We trust that you will listen to our petitions and grant what we need. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, Father, and the Holy Church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these sacred mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence and Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, <coughs> Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. From the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless sacrifice. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, 
in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, thou sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you into your into their company, not going our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. you 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. The prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. 
Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever.